Right, so the Amazing Digital Circus episode 3 just came out, depending on when I get this video out. I have a lot of things to say about this episode, however, I will first go over a brief explanation on what happened in the episode, and that means yes, there will be spoilers, so definitely go check out the episode before watching this video. The episode starts off with the main crew seeing how long Pomni can hold her breath and what she exactly does as she holds her breath. It is revealed that each cast member has a unique ability or unique change that happens to their body as they hold their breath, and we are revealed that Pomni's change is changing color, along with Kinger's being glowing, Ragatha's hair sticking up, and so on and so forth. Kane announces their new adventure, Zubal sneaks off, and the rest of the cast goes into the manor. There is some light banter between Pomni and Jax, and they meet their first ghost, which Jax sucks into a vacuum cleaner. There are two doors that the group could go into, one of them being quote-unquote PG, and the other being Zubal, certified and more quote-unquote mature. Pomni and Kinger are dragged down the second door, or the scariest door, while the other group seemingly goes to the other door. We then cut to a scene where Kane is trying to figure out why Zubal doesn't like to go on his adventures. It takes place in some sort of therapy-like session, and a few little bits are foreshadowed which would be later revealed in the later half of the episode. We then cut to Pomni and Kinger exploring some sort of room that they fell in, revealing some sort of story that the entire manor or adventure generally is following. Eventually, the lights are cut out and they make their way towards the center of the room, where a gigantic floating screaming glowing head reveals itself and starts screaming at them, slowly chasing them. Get some foreshadowing from Kinger and Pomni drags them into an elevator, which starts going down instead of up, which was originally their escape plan, however now they are going deeper into the underground part of this haunted mansion. We then cut to another therapy session or scene between Kane and Zubal. Zubal reveals that they don't really like being in their body, which is why they change out their parts in between every episode or seemingly every single day. Zubal says that nobody really likes Kane's adventures and either they're too nice to say it, nobody actually says it out loud, or something of the sort. Kane starts kind of having a panic attack and the digital circus main ground starts glitching in and out, which is kind of interesting, which I'll talk about again later. Zubal is eventually able to divert Kane's attention so that the digital circus doesn't literally implode, and we cut to another scene. Omni and Kinger are now farther down underground beneath the mansion. Eventually, they are attacked by the floating head that showed up before, along with its body. Kinger is able to find a shotgun and shoot both of them, which is then when it's revealed that it was actually an angel and they get dragged down to the pits of hell. I know, your average Tuesday. We then cut to a scene where Ragnarok Agatha and Gango are having a nice cup of tea with a ghost, which is actually the owner of the mansion's wife, who he killed, but that's unimportant. We also get to see Jax tied up with duct tape over his mouth so he can't move or speak. I wonder why they did that. We now cut to Kinger and Pomni, who aren't really seemingly in the pits of hell, but are in like a metaphorical version, at least that's just what I picked up or interpreted it as, I don't know. Pomni tries to leave by going through a hallway and up some stairs, however, she is temporarily possessed by some ghosts, and Kinger is able to literally beat the goes out of her with the butt of the shotgun. Through this, they try to relax and just collect their thoughts. Here, we actually get a very heart-to-heart -heart moment between Pomni and Kinger, which I will get into again later. Together, they try to walk down the hallway holding their breath, as Kinger thinks that's what gets the ghosts to be able to possess them. It works, and they're able to escape the deepest part of the manor, and are able to rejoin the main cast. Pomni goes up to Ragatha, and it says that she appreciates how nice Ragatha has been for the past three episodes, and that's pretty much where the episode ends, with there being a few endings bits towards the end of the episode, which I'll talk about a little bit towards the end of this video. Now it's actually time for my part and what my thoughts were about this episode. I will start off with the bad stuff and then get to the stuff I really appreciated. First off, the pacing of this episode was a bit wonky towards the beginning, however it did even out so I won't give too much critique about that area. Second, I don't really like how they sidelined Jax. Jax would have been a really funny character in this episode and personally I really like his jerk-like personality and I think it would have been a cool addition to this episode as we also got to see at the very beginning of this episode. I feel Feel like that could have really shined towards the middle or end of this episode when we got quick cuts to the other cast members in the Mason Digital Circus. However, he just got typed up and kind of got sidelined as this episode. Sure, he did get a lot of screen time in the past two episodes. However, this episode, he didn't really get any screen time or any words of dialogue, which it's not that bad to sideline a character for one episode. However, he should have gotten at least a few lines of dialogue, especially at the end, considering the fact that his character hasn't really been developed as much, which will probably happen in later episodes. However, it would have been nice to get a little bit in the first few episodes of the series. Speaking of characters having screen time, I'm kind of wishing that the other members of the cast being Ragatha and Gango got a little bit more screen time in this. Now I am aware of the structure the series will take, which each episode focusing a little bit on each character. However, it wouldn't have hurt to give Ragatha and Gango a little bit of more character development before their episode comes to pass. Now my last critique is how they developed Kinger in this episode. It was very similar on how they developed Gummy Goo, with Pomni having one-on-one -on -one time with this character. Now, 
there's nothing necessarily wrong about this, I'm just concerned that it will become a pattern on how to develop the main character focus for each episode. I would want to see something a bit more unique than that, and rather that be just another character being there, or another way I can't really think of off the top of my head, I just want to see something different than just one on one time with the main character of the show. With all my critiques out of the way, I would like to now appreciate the really good parts about this episode. Kinger was definitely the star of the show in this episode with his comedic bits basically landing every single time. Sure, a few of them fell short, but overall they really got me smiling, and even a few chuckles and laughs here and there. I'm sorry, could you speak up? I couldn't quite make that out. Here. Second, I have to talk about the animation. Now, I don't normally talk about the animation in shows like these, considering the fact that I don't want the budget of the series to really impact my review on it. However, I do have to appreciate the really good animation in this episode. It's really cool to see how these episodes in each series, whether it be The Amazing Digital Circus or Murder Drones or any indie series I see online, slowly improve their animation throughout the course of the series. It's just generally cool to see, and I hope I see more of it. Next, I have to talk about the horror a little bit. Now, the horror in this episode wasn't top-notch, it wasn't like Liam Vickers level or anything, but it was still pretty good. Lastly, I have my miscellaneous thoughts, which I couldn't really fit into any of the categories or anything I've said previously. A big gripe I've had with the past two episodes of Digital Circus is that it didn't really advance the plot a lot, or any of the characters, despite it being a character-driven show. However, the development for Kinger in this episode was top-notch. I really loved how they explained his wife and everything, which has really only been theory up until now. Also, the entire thing about abstraction was actually mentioned in this episode, despite it not being mentioned in episode 2. Not only did this episode really develop Kinger as a character, but it also really developed the plot, mentioning abstraction and maybe even giving some hints about Kane's backstory and his whole thing to do with the digital circus. Speaking of Kane and his therapy sessions and role in this episode, the fact that we get a little bit more insight on Kane as a character is really good. I really don't want him to be a static character, I want to see him change throughout the entire entire series, however him being a static character throughout the series and maybe even being an antagonist would be really cool to see and I'm glad that we see the world expanding with the whole glitching of the background or setting of the Amazing Digital Circus, along with Kane having a mini panic attack and also showing the limits of his AI. Also speaking of Zubo, I really like how they did her character development in this episode and I really hope we get more considering the fact that it really wasn't enough. Don't get me wrong, I really liked how they put more character development in their character, however it kind of wasn't enough, I'm glad we got a little bit of insight, again, for the third time, just making that clear, but I would like to see more of it in the future. Also, we didn't get some sort of big goopy monster like we got in the past two episodes getting hit on the head very hard. This time, it got shot in the head and wasn't very goopy, which I appreciated. But anyway, overall, the episode was actually really good, and I guess Glitch Productions upholds their title of having the best third episodes in their series. Don't quote me on that, I can't really fact check that for, uh, for Meta Runners or Sunset Paradise, but you get, my, you get what I'm saying. If you want to see more content like this, consider subscribing and liking the video so it lets me know. Comment down below anything I miss or if I'm wrong. Stay tuned and I'll see you next time.